Hello and welcome to Trojan Talk. I'm your host, Aaron Taylor. Today we'll be speaking with a Troy alum who has turned into a filmmaker to talk about her film that uh, focuses on her growth and, well, let's talk about it. Sarah Gamble is a filmmaker uh, here with us. Sarah, uh, thanks for joining us here today. Yeah, I'm excited. Thanks for having me, Aaron. And Armor is yes. the name of your film. It it's, is. A, it's, a, it's a documentary that uh, you've put a lot of time and effort into. Tell us a little bit about Armor and how this all came about. Well, Armor was a word that I used to describe my own experiences growing up biracial in the South. My family moved to Alabama when I was 14 and I was the only biracial student in the entire school and never really realized that that bothered me until I got a little bit older and I started to look around and realize that I felt like I had been existing in between worlds and that in order to protect that, that you know, innocent little child that lives within all of us, um, you know, we all put on armor. And um, so I use that as a, as a term to describe the situation, but it became the, the title of the film. And of course, the film itself, let's talk about how this process, uh, it, it, it's completed now, but it's been a long process and a, and a, and a I guess, a, a grueling process, but a, a, but a good process because you're able to, to share this story. Talk about the process and how long this actually took to make it on the film. Well, you know, it's funny, Aaron, because I never knew where to start. You know, I mean, obviously I'm a Troy grad. I am a double alum from Troy University and I got my undergrad degree in journalism and theater. And I always knew I wanted to be a filmmaker, but mm -hmm. I, you know, at the time that I was working on that goal in the late nineties, there were very few female directors, much less women of color. And so I went out to California and I kind of did my thing there. So I knew a little bit about filmmaking and production behind the scenes stuff, but had no idea where to start, especially in a small college town. But being a college town, what, a, what an amazing resource mm -hmm. that is for people who but, are professional, professional because you Now you've used, your crew is almost exclusively Troy University students, correct? It certainly is, absolutely, with the exception of the guy that did our original score and things like that, but almost exclusively Troy University students, yes. It's amazing. And, and so, and the process uh, from, from start to finish, how long did it take you to make this? Uh, it's approaching three years. Mm -hmm. um, and a friend of mine who does do film for the University of Alabama, he warned me, he said it took me two years just to edit my film. So <laughs> get ready. So I was somewhat prepared when I went into it, but um, had no idea that it was going to be this long of a process. I mean, when you step into something like that, you look for it to be kind of a therapy of mm -hmm. sorts. And so by the time you finish it, it's almost like you're losing your momentum because you feel like it's healed you. So, you know, you run the risk of, of you know, losing that passion along the way. But working with people every day that are so dedicated to your project, it, it restores your, your faith in humanity every day. Well, and let's talk about the, the therapeutic element of that because sure. you, are, you do get a chance to tell your story yes. and, and tell about that and what was important about your story that you wanted to share with the public. Well, you know, I felt that my story was unique simply because I was biracial. Mm -hmm. um, growing up here in Troy was a different experience. Um, you know, biracial people in general, worldwide I would say, um, but most specifically in rural areas, especially in the South, given the historical, you know, connotation that mm -hmm. goes along with that. Um, you know, I felt that it was a unique story to tell, and uh, but I also thought that it was mine alone because I didn't know anyone else. Mm -hmm. And so as I went through telling my story, I started meeting people just randomly on the street that would say, hey, I heard you're doing this project. My granddaughter's biracial. Hey, I heard you're doing this project. Mm -hmm. I'm interning at your school, that kind of thing. And I'm like, wow, it was just amazing to hear from people who were having the same experiences. Well, and, the, and the fact that you got to share those stories as well, it was, you know, I guess it started as this, this intimate to telling your story, but now you've got to share so many other stories. Sure. And and do you hope that maybe he, for someone hearing these stories, it might help them somewhere down the road? I really do. And I hope that um, it will bring a lot of hope and, and light into you know, areas of darkness that we still feel as a society. And um, I hope that people, not just biracial people or multiracial people, but people that are marginalized in any way in society feel something about this film and that they'll take that and use it in a positive way. And of course, uh, now for, for any of the individuals who, who want to see this film, obviously it's not going to be uh, a wide release uh, movie at this point. Not you're, yet. And not yet, uh, sure. you know, hopefully maybe knock on wood that may happen, but you're starting, mm -hmm. you're getting out in the festival circuit. Uh, yes. uh, and so folks can, who are interested may get, be on the lookout for it, see yes. if they can check it out. Are there, are there any other opportunities, ways they may be able to, to see this outside of festivals? Well, um, 
we're starting small right now, mm -hmm. and um, we're going to do a local screening coming up soon. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, we've also applied to about 25 to 30 other festivals okay. um, as closely related to our area as Montgomery, okay. um, Atlanta, and then as far reaching as New Zealand and um, Vancouver and Toronto, Canada. So um, we're hoping for the best. And then uh, hopefully maybe somebody will pick it up and it will hey. get that wide release and, hey. and folks will all over will get to see your story. Well, uh, I hope I, so. I'm thankful that you were able yes. to come and share this story. Uh, Sarah's Thank a you. long time friend of mine and I'm glad yes. to be able to share your story that you shared to the folks out there and thank uh, you, good luck in spreading the message out there, I appreciate Sarah. it. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on today's edition of Trojan Talk.